Why did you apply for the project? Uh, I applied for the project because from when I first saw your presentation to our Gaelic class in this room, uh, I knew it would be a once in a lifetime opportunity that I'd regret if I didn't take the chance to apply for it. And I knew I'd never been anywhere before and I knew it would be my chance to experience things that probably other people wouldn't get the chance to experience and meet people that other people wouldn't have had the chance to do as well. Yeah, and also it gave me a chance to share my Gaelic, my local culture, my bagpipe music, my heritage to people all over the world, which, yeah, I was quite excited to do. Um, basically, oh, the first thing that like grabbed my attention about the project was getting to go all the way to Costa Rica, which was something really exciting since I've never even left the country before. Um, but as I found out even more about the project, I realised that it was like an opportunity that sounded perfect for me because I've always been interested in other cultures and like other countries. So like having the chance to immerse myself in another culture like first hand. Like it wasn't something that I could just like not go for. Well, to start off with, I wasn't going to apply for the project because I didn't think that I would get in because there was so many people interested. Uh, but then I decided to apply because I knew that I would never get the opportunity again and that I was lucky to even have the opportunity. And I was glad that I did apply because I ended up getting in. Yeah, I decided to apply for this project because it sounded amazing. I thought it would be an amazing opportunity if I was lucky enough to get a position. Uh, the thought of going across to the other side of the world sounded very appealing and I wanted to push myself and try something that was out of my comfort zone. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the selection process was, 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 was important in the first place, but from that point on, watching them actually engaging in the, pro in the, in the, uh, in the project itself, seeing them actually grow as people, because to be uh, have the confidence to, uh, well, international travel, communicating with people in other cultures, learning about other cultures, all of these things are fantastic in themselves. But then to be able to interpret what you do or what your culture is for other folk and then to demonstrate that to them, to, um, to speak to large public bodies, to engage folk in what you're doing, that's, that's a step on. And watch them grow as people doing that. Uh, and I think it's been an excellent experience for them. What did you learn from the communities that you visited? Um, I think what I learned from the communities that I visited was that they're really not so different from um, our community over in Sky. Um, I realised that there's a lot of similarities between the two cultures in areas such as um, dancing and the language and um, arts and crafts and music and stuff like that. Um, I also realised that both cultures face similar challenges in terms of like tourism and um, globalisation and like modernisation. So both cultures are kind of working to preserve that by kind of teaching it to our children. Um, and I also got to see the passion that they have over in Costa Rica for their own culture and um, how much they respect their own environment. So I think that was something that I took back with me to Sky because I feel like it's something that we're kind of losing over here. So. Well, I learned that we need to respect our environment and uh, look after our cultural heritage because it will be so important to our ancestors. We learned many uh, legends, stories, songs, ways, the way of life there and how they do things over there, like make their masks and uh, weave and just live. These communities showed me that how important community spirit is and how happy you can be whatever your circumstances. I learned to always be welcoming to everyone and to offer kindness and to never lose hope. Okay. Yeah. Do you think the Isle of Sky community has benefited from this project? No doubt, no doubt about it, because it, it goes two ways, because you're looking at, I suppose you're looking back away, there's, there's the nature of it, there's a museum focused uh, project, you're looking back at your own community for them looking and investigating what, what the values are and what the, 
where the value is in their own community, being able to say to, to demonstrate to demonstrate that to other folk. But uh, you you took in as well a completely different culture, a group of kids from Costa Rica here in the summer, and for them, for the short time that they were here, to, to open their eyes to what, what's valuable here, it's, it's, it goes both ways, it's incredibly valuable. What did you share with the communities that you visited? Um, well, we shared some of our, well, the island's native language, Gaelic, um, some Scottish dance, and some traditional crofting methods. And the way of life on Sky. Um, we had opportunities to kind of um, share aspects of our own culture back at home and compare them to the, the culture in Costa Rica. Um, we got to bring pictures of um, our family and the landscape and stuff. I think that's something the Costa Rican do really enjoy to see. Um, I think we were all surprised to kind of see how similar it actually was. And we also got to teach them traditional paleo dancing. <laughs> Well, I brought my pipes over, Charlotte and I brought our pipes, and we played those in a few places, and it was a pretty cool thing to do, playing pipes, and it just it sounded different over there. I don't know if it was just echoing off the trees or something, it just, yeah, it had a different sound to it, and it's just, it's quite a humbling thing to do, to play your national instrument in another country in the middle of the rainforest to an indigenous community. And I feel they appreciated it as well. With since we started playing, the whole community basically came out to want to see what this noise was. Uh, firstly, I shared the music. I took my bagpipes over, and it was a great opportunity for me to take something I loved over to a different country and to people that don't even know what bagpipes are. And it was amazing to see their faces when I showed them a completely different instrument and how amazing it was to see them try and play something that I think is just second nature to me. And we also shared the differences, which is like how different the climate is, how different the wildlife is, the bugs, the food in particular, and our music is very different as well. And we also shared the similarities. So the influence of tourism as well was a big thing and how we don't want our communities to be ruined by tourists and but we also want to welcome everyone want to welcome tourists in as well and also how similar our clothes and things like that is as well. What was the most challenging moment in the project? Uh, for me I would say the most challenging part was the heat in particular because I've never experienced anything like that, especially the humidity and always been hot and sweaty proved a big factor for me. But and also it made you very tired and grouchy, but with loads of sun cream and gallons of water I survived it. <laughs> Probably the first day when I went there, before we had gone into the communities and yeah, I, that was my first time being abroad properly. Never experienced heat, never been so far from home. Never been away from home for, well, that was going to be so lo as long as that. So I was quite unsure what was going ahead of me. Um, but that'll change pretty quickly once we went into communities and met people, started making friends and yeah, from there on, I enjoyed it and I wish it could have lasted. Well, I feel like the language barrier when we in Reiki Ray was the most challenging part of the project because it was, to start off, it was really hard to speak to the Costa Ricans, but we soon found out that Google Translate was a great way to um, make friendships and learn more about them. And also the Portuguese helps us to translate because Portuguese is so similar to Spanish. The most challenging part for me was kind of being scared of, I didn't know what was going to happen when we first got to the communities. Didn't know how they were going to react to us and how we were going to interact and stuff like that. 
Um, however, they were really, really welcoming and they helped us feel at ease very quickly and we, we found other ways of interacting through like sharing the dancing with each other and showing each other pictures of back home and stuff like that. So in the end it was actually really hard to leave them <laughs> because we, we become such close friends. How has your family, school and community reacted to your experience? Um, my family has been very interested. People like my granny probably didn't even know Cross Street existed, this or that, and she's always been, she's always asking questions about it, and um, and I, I gave her a wee um, one of the wee handbags, and she she has that all the time, to keep it for her phone and her notepad, notepad, things like that. She walks around the place like that. Um, and I would say my school was very interested to hear about all and the amazing opportunity that only a few of us got. And also the teachers were very happy and proud of what we had done and everything we had seen and experienced. Um, my family were definitely very supportive of it. Um, my dad was really jealous. <laughs> you know, he was really excited that I was finally getting to um, go out and see the world. Well, they've all been really supportive. Um, especially the community, because I decided to do a soup and pudding fundraiser and lots of people turned out to help me raise funds to get over to um, Costa Rica and um, my family have been really supportive, they've helped me raise my money and organise the soup and pudding and um, yeah, they've been really interested in the project and what we were doing over there and we're excited to see photos and videos and hear about what we learnt and what we were doing. How have you changed since the start of the project? I feel I've become more confident and just a, more aware of my environment and my surroundings and that we really need to remember our heritage and have an interest in it so that it's not lost. I would say that I've definitely changed for the better. I've grown a lot in confidence and um, because of the project I've found myself going for opportunities that I might not have before. Um, I've definitely made a lot more friends because I've become a lot more sociable. And I was really more nervous about getting a job before but I finally, I think it was because of this trip that um, I decided to just go out and like, finally get a job. Yeah, I would say I have changed a lot really. I've always had a great interest in travelling and that's just it's just shown me to pursue what I want and the dreams I have. And one thing that I'm very thankful for is the confidence it's made me because I have done so much that I would never have thought of doing a couple of years ago. Especially speaking in public and interviews and everything. It's something I've never thought I would do, but it's given me the confidence to go and show the world and do what I want to do and speak out. Um, I've 
changed in a lot of ways since the start of the project. I've, I would have never imagined from before I went on this project that I'd be able to speak in front of the community or like the conference in Barbados. I could have never imagined that I would be able to speak in front of that many people in another country. And yeah, just my confidence has greatly improved. I don't think I would have managed a lot of things I've done since then. It wasn't for this project and going over there. And I've become more aware of where I live, how lucky I am to live where I live with things I've got, like my Gaelic, my uh, ability to play the pipes, and just my culture and his the history of this place we live, and how lucky we are to live here, and to have had the opportunity to share it with others, and which has made me want to travel more in the future, to be, up, be able to do share again and see other cultures. But I was absolutely thrilled to see just the blossoming of these young people. And today they're people who will give you a lovely welcome, having before been you know, a bit closed. And they have come on in leaps and bounds. And you only have to read their blogs. And I would advise anybody who's watching this to read the blogs because the blogs speak volumes about the life-changing experience that this has been for them. If you could sum up your overall experience in one sentence, what would it be? Absolutely amazing. One sentence. I just think... <laughs> I, 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 I can't go over how fortunate we've been to be involved in it because I think for the kids themselves it's been such a growing experience, but for us it's been great to see them grow in it. But, uh, and uh, if there was one thing that sort of stuck in my mind, it was the day that the ladies were here and they were speaking uh, for themselves about their own community uh, and spoke to a large group of, of quite young kids who didn't have much of a notion as to what, what the project was in the first place and they were actually spellbound by what, what they heard. So uh, we spoke to the village elders uh, at that time. That was, that, was a, that was a very special thing. Well, I would say that it was someone's throwing you a lifeline and they're saying, are you going to catch the other end of this rope? And you say, oh dear, I'm going to have lots of extra work to do and, um, you know, maybe I'll be typing lots of reports, etc. Um, are you going to grab the other end of the rope? Well, we did and I'm really glad we did. It was truly life-changing and amazing experience and I'll never forget everything I've seen, the friends I've made and I always have a big place in my heart. Life-changing and something I will never forget. I think I would say that it was a beautiful and life-changing experience and it's definitely one that will stay close to my heart forever. <laughs>